In this video, I have three really easy tricks for painting fur in watercolour. So my first clever trick for painting fur is to emboss some lines before applying your paint. So I've got a couple of things here. I've got an embossing tool and I've got a craft knife. If you don't have an embossing tool like this, there are a few things you can use. You can use something like a ballpoint pen with no ink in, or you can use a hard pencil and put a piece of tracing paper down to protect your paper from actually being drawn on. Now, when you're using the knife, you'll need to make sure that you're using it on the side of the blade, not cutting with it. And what you're going to do is take some lines up. Now, the knife will give narrow, fine lines. You want to go up and out in the direction the fur is growing because the lines will taper. And the embossing tools come in different point sizes. You can get thick and thin. You can see this one has got different ones on each end. And we're going to come up like this. What I'll do is I'll take the embossing tool on the right here and we'll have the knife on the left and in the middle is the bit where I put both on at once and that will show you the difference between them. Now this effect will look even better if you go on top with a granulating pigment mix. So I've mixed a bit of a colour here. You can see it's got ultramarine and cerulean in and I've mixed it in with some burnt sienna. And I'm going to apply this across the area that I have scratched and embossed. And there you see how it looks. Now that's interesting, isn't it? The knife has shown up much more than the embossing tool at this stage. They do sometimes take a couple of coats of paint before they show fully. And you can also do this into wet paint. So let's go a little heavier with our embossing tool. since It's not showing up so well. And there we start getting those lines appearing and the same with the knife you can go in with the knife and get that lovely fur texture if you are enjoying this video can i ask you to do me a quick favor can you please click that like button that thumbs up button if you like share subscribe or leave me a comment here on youtube all of these things are free it will help my channel to grow and i can teach more people like you how to paint and draw so my next trick is all about backgrounds. Are we going to use the background to make the animal, to make the fur? This works for feathers too, by the way, if you've got a bird that's particularly fluffy, to make the area fluffy. So if we imagine we have our animal, and here's the edge of the animal. So the animal's over here. This is the edge of the animal, and I'm going to paint round. Now, if I just paint on dry paper like this, I'm going to get a very hard edge. Now that's sometimes appropriate. There's always areas on animals that are smooth and have a hard edge around the outside. The same with birds. You may have a hard edge around the wing, for instance, but then there may be under the chin, perhaps some fluffy feathers. The same with animals. There may be certain areas, perhaps around the ears or the top of the head or the side where the whiskers are that are soft and fluffy. So what you want to do is you want to make your background show the fluffy edge before you've ever even started painting the animal. So there are two stages to this and you can stop at the first stage if you just want an animal with a soft outline. What we're going to do is we're going to take some water around the outside and we're going to come into where the animal itself is because we don't want the paint that we're taking around the outside edge to come off of the edge of the water. So let's get something that might be perhaps a background colour. So let's go in with some green and let's go a little bit stronger. So I've got what I wanted. I've got my soft edge. But what if I want something really feathery here? I want some real sort of fronds of soft fur. What I want to do is just give this a moment until it's semi dry. Now, if you put water or paint that's very wet against paint that is damp, it will spread into those areas. You may have found that happened when you didn't want it to, when you were trying to paint something neatly and the thing next to it hadn't dry and all of a sudden the paint spreads across. It's like it knows where to go. It knows where the mistakes are. It knows how to cause you the most pain and it's going to head over there. It's simple physics. Wet areas want to spread out, they want to seek a level, and so the wet is going to want to push into the damp. So this area here is now damp. So I'm going to go back in and I'm going to put clean water on this left hand side of it. What we're doing here is we're making backgrounds and cauliflowers, or blooms, whatever you like to call them, on purpose. This wet water, if that's an actual phrase I can use, the, the wet water is trying to spread across onto that damp background and you're getting a fluffy, 
furry edge. So you can make your animals start looking furry before you've ever started painting them just by the way that you paint in the background. Of course, if there's another area of the animal, perhaps around here, that isn't fluffy, you can just come down on dry paper and keep that edge smooth. So lastly, we're going to use some white paint and fur is one of the few occasions where I find white paint is really invaluable. Now, there are two types of white watercolor paint. One is titanium white. That's more often sold as gouache, although some manufacturers label it as watercolor. Then you get zinc white, which is sometimes labeled as Chinese white and is always sold in watercolor sets. Zinc white is less strong and more transparent. So I want full on opaque white here. So I'm using titanium white. And I've got a really scruffy fan brush here, which has been chopped into, and I'm using very little water. So we want that kind of dry brush effect. You may need to get rid of some of the water on your paintbrush, either on some paper towel or just on a scrap of paper. And then what you're looking to do is to stroke this upwards in the direction that the fur is growing. And you're just adding those light hairs to the fur. Now you may want to do this in several colors. So after doing the white, you may want to go in with a darker color. So here I've got a little Payne's gray and I can sweep that across as well. I can then allow that to dry and go in with another layer of white if I need to. And I'm really starting to build up that fur texture now. Now you can go from anything like very distinct marks like these ones where you're working on very dry paper to areas where you've allowed the paint to blend a little bit like this. You can even, if you want to, if there are areas on the animal that are completely soft, you can even go in with some clean water and blend those areas out for softness. The titanium white is fantastic for getting those tiny, tiny light hairs and giving that proper textured fur effect. Thank you so much for watching this three essential tips video. Before you leave this video, don't forget to have a look in the video description. I've got lots of free stuff down there for you. I've got free downloadable PDFs with art tips on. I've even got a free watercolor painting mini course that you can take. Don't forget to subscribe to see more videos like this one. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.